the point. We've got a problem on the racetrack. Caution comes Johnny out. Benson. It's Johnny Benson, the 23, having problems. You see the sparks flying out from underneath and the right side. Going flat. It, uh, it didn't feel tight until right there on four. And Johnny moved up to the sixth spot. You could hear him. He said it, it didn't really feel tight. So he didn't really know that he had anything going wrong. He must have run over something, Mike. That's what it sounds like. Johnny's had a rough little uh, last hour or so. He had a fast car in practice for the cup race, missed that event, and now here just uh, less than 20 laps into this, this race, moving up through the field, he's crashed already. And a lot of damage to the right side of that truck, so obviously the right tire going out and then him making contact with the wall. And his, his commentary was perfect. He said that uh, it wasn't tight at all. It just went flat, so evidently he cut that tire, like you said, Phil. A lot of damage. Let's take another look at this, Phil. So look to your right of your screen there. You see the tire go really in the second part of the of the dog leg. The tire goes down and so that, that's where you want to have it go down. Absolutely. I mean, he made some contact with the wall, but it would have been a whole lot worse had he had been in the corner. There's a chance. There's they another can... shot right there. You can see the, the left rear tire has moved over actually outside the body. So it bent the rear and uh, panard rod and or trailing arms and put and pulled it over. Let's listen to Johnny. Sounds hard, doesn't it feel? Sure when you hit those walls, Rick, it yeah. never, it still hurts when somebody else hits it. <laughs> well, people say softer bears. Well, they're not really softer bears. They're, they're safer barriers, and they lessen the blow. Here comes the field onto pit road as Johnny Benson's in the garage. Kyle Busch will lead Ron Hornaday. Adam Alexander. Jack Sprague started fifth, trying to get over a tough outing at California two weeks ago. He's up to fourth in the running order. Just a bit snug in the center. Four tires, fuel, slight air pressure adjustment. Right on lap. The number 51 truck, you'll see the hood going up. They're going to put rounds in the front springs. They're going to try to lift that truck up off of the ground a little bit. So this will be a fairly long pit stop. They were talking about, do we or do we not change tires? Now for Hornaday down at the other end, Rick Wren said he wanted fuel only. But Ron Hornaday said, nope, we got to do tires. So there's going to go tires on to this number 51 he came in as the leader he'll go out in the back of the pack I, I love a tire rule you know it gives these crew chiefs a chance to make a difference they can make some calls Kyle Busch he went under the hood and worked on his truck we saw him at Daytona just knowing at any minute he's gonna go under the hood and work <laughs> on it never did down there here leading the race driving away they decided they had to adjust that thing that's all that crew member right there that has that ratchet that's what they use to raise that front up there's jack screws on each side, they use that to raise that front up off the ground. Rick Richie Waters makes those calls, and I like the way he calls a race. Again, the reason why we're under this first caution of the night at Atlanta Motor Speedway, Johnny Benson, we're riding along with him through the quad oval, and then the right front tire blows out and into the wall. Kyle Busch was leading. It was the 33 that came off of pit road first after the pit stops. When we come back, we'll line them all back up and get the green. Check out the new SpeedTV.com, the one-stop shop for the latest NASCAR news results, commentary, and video. Log on to SpeedTV.com today. NASCAR on speed. Be there. Beautiful pictures being brought to you by... Direct TV, NASCAR Hot Pass only on Direct TV, puts you behind the wheel. Direct TV spaceship up there, giving us those shots. Mikey, I think we've got a, uh, well, a lucky dog. And Aaron's lucky dog here in Atlanta. Their corporate headquarters are here. We saw Brian almost crash. Must have got his breath collected back up. Now he's accepted the Aaron's lucky dog drive around and get back on the lead lap. What's going on down on pit road, Ray? Well, Michael, just wanted to let you know that Rowdy is back in here on the 51. Why? Well, they did not get the rounds in the track bar. They wanted to go two rounds down. They're going to get that done. And the guys went to the front to make sure that all four of those hood pins were securely fashioned, fastened. Excuse me. They've got that done, and he will go back out. And now he has three laps more of fuel than the other guys. Remember, they all came to pit road on lap 20. Adam? And you can see what's left of the tire for Johnny Benson. The Goodyear engineers have checked it over, said they cannot diagnose exactly what went wrong. You see what's left of the tire. Over here, what's left of the truck. Johnny Benson back-to-back. -back. Third place finishes to start 2008. But a rocky start to the evening here in Atlanta. And the crew really working hard on his machine.
Chad McCovey with an impressive qualifying effort starting on the outside of row number one and then problems on pit road it looks like as he's 25th now in the running order. Adam Alexander, do you know what happened there? Well, Chad... Chad McCombie had to come back down pit road, losing a number of positions and pit strategy playing out here in this first segment of the race. While Chad McCombie losing on pit road, Travis Quapple up to third with a two-tire stop, guys. Chad decided to come back in and top his that gas tank off. He was already way in the back. What about a two-tire stop for Travis Quapple? What about that strategy well, early on in this race? Well, we heard Kyle Busch's crew and some of the other Hornaday's crew talking about not taking tires at all. Yeah. So I like that call as long as it doesn't mess you up with the amount of tires you have left for the rest of the race. It was a fairly early pit stop here around lap number 20. We know we have to go 130 laps. These guys only had four sets of tires for this race, one on the truck, three in the pits. So, you know, a little tire economics may not be a bad plan right now. But I think what he did was he sacrificed two left side tires, basically. He said, I'm not going to put on those two tires. I'm going to get two rights right now, use those tires to get me some track position, hopefully hold that track position, then I'll fire four tires at it when I'm up front. Scoring monitor shows Hornaday out in front, Sprague running second, third. Adam Alexander. And before we had the caution brought out by Johnny Benson, an unscheduled stop for Scott Speed, who's making his NASCAR debut here this evening. And the reason he came down under green, felt a vibration in the truck. He thought it was a right front tire. Unfortunately, when he came down pit road, the tire's in good shape. So an ill-advised stop early for Scott Speed, and he becomes one of the growing list of drivers who are now battling track position in the early stages here tonight. Safety crew is still working on cleaning up this racetrack. So while they're doing that, we're going to run away to another commercial break. Be back for the green flag here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Welcome back. Green flag in the air as we restart for the American Commercial Lines 200. Out in front of the field again, it's Ron Hornaday Jr., then Jack Sprague, Travis Quapple, Todd Bodine, Mike Skinner, your top five, Brendan Gaughan, Terry Cook, Matt Crafton, Colin Brown, and Eric Darnell, your top ten. Ted Musgrave, the 59 truck, is lined up right now right behind Ron Horner. Remember, he did not get the Aaron's Lucky Dog, so he is still one lap down. There goes Todd Bodine on the inside of Scott Legacy Jr. Travis Quapple, the Zaxby's Ford, drops in behind the 20 of Scott Legacy Jr. Little too wide racing going on here. See the truck of Terry Cook right down on the bottom along with Skinner. Hornaday's check this mess out. Well, how about four wide? And <laughs> take a look at Kyle Bush in the 51 <laughs> passing on the apron. Was he on the flat in the corner? What was he doing down there? Did you guys say he'll pass? Oh, he's doing it again. Oh, and he's going to get Colin Brown. He gets into Colin Brown. He slides on the apron. Let's see if Colin Brown can keep it on the apron and away from the racetrack he turns around no caution yet no caution flag let's see if he can get moving ray what's going on down there come on. colin brown had come on the radio about halfway down the back stretch and said i got a flat right front tire flat tire guys i'm gonna pit so that's why he was slow and that's why rowdy was down on the inside there to make the contact i bet he never dreamed somebody would hit him from the left side though did, <laughs> did you think <laughs> He keeps moving forward. Kyle Busch now taking the spot away from the 16. Brian Scott, so he has moved up into the top 20 now. Kyle Busch has made some tremendous moves here. Let's, let's take a look back at when, when Kyle was down on the apron of the race. Watch him down there. He's got the 11 of David Starr right in front of him. They get seized up a little bit. He's just going to turn left, drive down in the flat of the racetrack, drive by that 11 truck of David Starr. He's not done yet. See the 6 of Colin Brown right there in front of him. Watch when we get down here to the next corner. Remember, Colin Brown thinks he has a flat tire. He's trying to get down to the apron. Kyle's down there below him. They make just slight bit of contact. It turns Colin around, and Kyle Busch continues on. Yeah, it seized him up for just a moment, though. Stopped that momentum that he had. Obviously, Kyle Busch was running down on the bottom of the racetrack thinking, nobody's going to come down here. I'm the only one to try this. And then all of a sudden, Colin Brown comes down. Take a look at this. A battle for the lead. Ron Hornaday Jr. Actually, that's the 59 of Ted Musgrave. He's still a lap down. Ted's got a fast truck. He's dealing with his, our leader. He needs that caution flag to fly, though, so he can try to get that Aaron's lucky dog. Are these guys three wide? Oh, they squeeze <laughs> back. Trying to line. make it three wide. At the Brennan gone, le the right there leading that Ford number 10. There's Terry Cook in that 60. That's the truck that Jack Sprague drove last year. And there's Mike Skinner in that five truck. And here comes Eric Darnell in the Northern Tool and Equipment Ford. Brendan was one of the slowest trucks here in practice earlier today. Just to tell, uh-oh. 
There's three wide, except it didn't last long. <laughs> Brendan, Brendan's <laughs> truck was slow earlier today. They did some, made some great changes to that thing. Now he's running up in the seventh spot. I talked to Brian Berry, his crew chief before the race, and I said, what did Brendan say about the truck? And when they qualified, it wasn't very fast. He said, I, I think we're okay. We're good. I can, I can drive it. So, obviously, he's showing us that he can. Well, NASCAR just came on the radio to Kyle Busch and said, all right, Kyle, you got to settle down now. Calm down a little bit. And please, use the racetrack. <laughs> so, here's what Kyle does. Well, I'll use the high side of the racetrack now then. That's, yeah. that's part of the racetrack, isn't it? They didn't like it when I went on the left side. Let's see how they like it when I take the right. We're going to pass to the right now. Now, as a, as a race car driver, uh, you're Scott Speed, Formula One racer. And you see this cat go flying by guys on the apron, and then you think, okay, that's the line you need to run, the apron. I got it. I want to do that. And then you look up, and he's going around everybody on the high side. Oh, you go by the wall. That's where you got to pass everybody, that's, up there. That's got to be a little bit confusing for Scott Speed and some of these guys that are that are new to this stuff. Mike Skinner makes the pass on Brendan Gaughan. Mike takes over the sixth position for Brendan Gaughan. You see Matt Crafton, the 88, leading that group. He's running fifth right now. Matt Crafton in the top five. Travis Quaffle fourth. Jack Sprague's third. Todd Bodine's moved up to second. And Ron Horn today still leading this charge around Atlanta Motor Speedway. Eric Darnell, the 99, posted the outside of that Weiler Toyota of Terry Cook. You know, I like Travis Quaffle's strategy right now. He did two tires to get up front, get some track, track position, and he's maintaining a top four spot. Spreading out a bit now. See a battle for 19th and 20th here. Chad Chaffin in that 40, Andy Lally in the seven. And here comes the 18, Dennis Setzer making his way up there now. Yeah, Dennis made a late pit stop, Michael. He was one of the last cars or last trucks on pit road. Now he's making some moves here. There's the lucky dog of last caution flag, Brian Scott, the 16. We've already seen Brian have that thing way crossed up, and it looks like it's wanting to do it with him again. His truck looks really loose. Adam Alexander, how is Dennis Setzer doing on the racetrack? Well, early it was not good, guys. Extremely loose, so they called for a number of changes on that first pit stop at lap 20. He also got four tires. At the restart, he was back right around the 25th position. But as you guys can see, they've got it where he wants it, working on Andy Lally for a spot in the top 20. Good to see Andy Lally get his arms around this thing. You know, it's it's quite quite an undertaking. We saw him have a major crash at Phoenix. He's yep. a road racer. This is all new to him. It's good to see him be competitive running inside that top 20. Here is a very competitive race truck. Ron Hornaday looking to rebound after the slow start at Daytona. Just behind him, it's the 88. Todd Bodine's actually running second, but the 88 making moves around this racetrack. Ted's got to be really frustrated over that start. He's sitting there riding along in the second spot, which is where he was running when he got black flag. But now he's a lap down. He's got to get around that lead truck of Ron Hornaday to get back in contention. There's Todd Bodine right there. You see Todd started back in the seventh position, all the way up to second now. Mile and a half master. Just behind Todd Bodine, you just saw the two go by. That's the American Commercial Lines Toyota Ton, or excuse me, Chevy Silverado of Jack Sprague joining Kevin Harvick Incorporated this season. That's looking a lot better there. Looking good now. And that's what I think they were looking for when they paired Jack Sprague up with Ron Hornaday. They knew that they had two great drivers, both three-time champions, and here they are now running in the top three, both trucks. Matt Crafton running in that four spot. Coming back out on the racetrack, Johnny Benson bringing our camera back out onto pit road and onto the racetrack. So Johnny Benson throwing his hat back into this race. Although about 19 laps down to the field. It's Hornaday out in front of Bodine, Sprague, Crafton, and Skinner. Sunday on Speed, step into the wind tunnel where everybody has an opinion and any topic is fair game. Don't miss the biggest names, the biggest opinions, and, well, sometimes the biggest mouths. And don't be afraid to give Dave Despain a piece of your mind and a special guest, Stefan Sarazan, will join him in Wind Tunnel. That's Dave Despain, Sunday, 9 p.m. Eastern. Our second caution has come out. It was Justin Marks spinning out of turn number four on lap 42. Now they come down to pit road. Adam Alexander. Jack Spread riding second in the two. Riding third in the 30 is Todd Bodine. Both their crew chief set of the 33 comes. You can come as well. Both get fuel only and an adjustment. Ron Hornaday in front of Ray. 33 is going to get fuel only. Rick Wren said, I don't even want to pit right now. Hornaday said, I don't think we can stay out there, can we? Looks like they make a little adjustment, but Hornaday will not be the first one off of pit road. Sprague beats him out. 